could estimate from the curve of the ground uh, where the crest of the ridge would be that, you know, it was coming from too high up to be uh, campers. Uh, uh, you know, every kind of explanation just kind of went through our minds uh, as we uh, got closer. Uh, thinking, well, could it be the sunset? No, that was a long time ago. Could it be the moon? No, there's the moon over there. And, and you know, could it be a plane crash? Because by now it's becoming evident it was up in the trees. So the idea of fire uh, came to mind because we had... Uh, on occasion, uh, been headed uh, through the woods and found a tree that was on fire where it had been hit by lightning. Uh, that part of the country uh, has the highest number of lightning strikes of any place uh, in the continental United States except for the Everglades. So, you know, if you're walking along the top of the rim there, you're always within sight of a tree that's been hit by lightning. So that was what where the idea of fire in the sky came from. Could that be a fire? And uh, so, you know, they'd come and the Forest Service come and got us before to, to come and help them fight forest fire. They, they'd go, any, uh, go get any of the woods crews because, you know, we're experienced, do we have the tools and, and you know, ready to go to, to do that kind of thing. So that was probably uppermost in a lot of people's mind, but, um, I said, Mike, hurry up, get up there where we can see, because I could see there was kind of a break in the trees enough to where the light was shining sort of across the road there. And uh, I was uh, sitting in front by the door. Mike was driving. Uh, Kenny was in the middle. Uh, Alan Dallas, he's in the upper right here. And he was, he was sitting uh, directly behind me. Um, in the movie, there was only six of us, but there was actually seven on, on the crew. And um, so it's, as soon as we got to that place where the light was shining across the tree, uh, this, uh, this, this tree, the street road, um, there it was, boom. I mean, it was unmistakable. The, the UFO skeptics, you know, they always go look at the astronomy charts and decide which planet was most visible. And so they were trying to claim that this was the planet Jupiter, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, it was as close as from here to the back of the room. It was just, there was no mistaking. Uh, Alan uh, yelled out, it's a flying saucer right off. I mean, well, it, was, there, it was just obvious. It was astonishing. I mean, we were just, ah. Uh, uh, it was, the impact of just what was seeing that so sudden, I, I, Mike was kind of on the opposite side and, and had to look up at an angle, so the, the roof of the truck sort of obscured his view. He didn't really know what we were talking about, so I yelled at him to stop the truck, and he uh, put on the brakes and skidded to a stop there. But I was thinking, this thing's going to take off, you know? It's going to be gone in a flash. Because this, you know, happens a lot. You know, you're riding along and you spot a, a wild animal and you say, hey, look. And before they can even turn their head and look in that direction, it's gone. So I was just thinking this thing would, would you know, be gone. I'd miss a chance to see it up close. And, and so I got out and headed towards it. Now, when I got out of the truck, I uh, left the door open. I was just, you know, just kind of on impulse thinking that. But the closer I got, I could see it wasn't, uh, wasn't taken off. And, uh, <laughs> and those guys were getting very anxious and, and, and swearing at me and yelling at me to get back in the truck. And, you know, I became more and more uh, scared and uh, kind of slowed down. I was standing there looking up at it. And it, it was just an awesome sight. It was just... You know, the other guys in the crew have described it as looking, you know, frightening and, and beautiful at the same time. Uh, it was metallic, uh, and parts of it were glowing, giving off light, but it wasn't so bright that you couldn't see. Uh, when we said it looked like molten metal, uh, um, we were talking about uh, like molten steel out of a blast furnace, you know, when you see them pouring it out of those big things. It's 
it's white hot, uh, kind of a yellow, golden sort of a, a thing, but you can still see there's a surface there. Um, in the movie, they made it look like molten lava and stuff, but never mind the movie, they, they, they uh, weren't interested in creating a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> but I was looking up at it there and they were getting really anxious and calling me every, everything <laughs> under the sun and I was getting kind of scared myself, kind of scared <laughs> but uh, suddenly it got louder and it uh, started to move and it was just kind of an instant reaction for me to just jump for cover there was some logging debris there I jumped down behind a log, uh, false security, <laughs> uh, being behind that, and those guys were pretty much screaming at me and cussing me out to run, and uh, I didn't need to be told. <laughs> I was just kind of debating whether it was safer to stay hidden behind this log or to get back to the truck. So I decided I was gonna run back to the truck. I sort of half turned and, and, and straightened up, and before I could even take a step, I felt this numbing shock. Uh, it just, um, it, felt, it felt sort of like an electrical shock, you know, if you've ever touched a spark plug wire or something like that, uh, but also kind of like a physical blow, you know, when you got, maybe got tackled in football and didn't, didn't see it coming. A real stunning force kind of thing. But very quickly, I blacked out. Uh, Guys uh, in the truck said uh, it threw me 10 to 20 feet, and uh, John said it was it was like uh, there wasn't a bone in my body, like it's just a sack of meat. Said it just fell there, no 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 attempt to you know break my fall or anything, totally gone, and uh, they said that they started yelling at each other, he's dead, it killed him, you know, and. They were just immediately certain. It was so violent that, that, that it had to be fatal. And so they took off. And uh, <laughs> good, you guys understand that. But uh, <laughs> you know what they had to deal with? The, uh, people saying, oh, man, you guys should have been more heroic than that. You know, well, what a bunch of cowards to run off and leave your, your friend there. Uh, but, you know, it would have made no sense for them to uh, get themselves killed to, to rescue a dead man, uh, you know, to them. That was a, a foregone conclusion. So.